Hello everyone, uh, made it to Abraham Lake for sunset, uh, updated cloud forecast is a little bit scary, 100% cloud coverage so probably won't be anything much to shoot. Um, the whole point of coming here though was to find some nice uh, kind of abstract bubbles with some cracks through them so hopefully we can find that, the light is kind of mute so um, it's windy here, really windy, um, hopefully the uh, mic's picking me up but it's a little bit crazy, so we're going to spend some time um, on the lake right away. In my tea. Good to go. See you in the lake. Well, well, hope you guys can hear me okay. Um, out on the lake, and one thing you have to know, today was plus 9, plus 10 this afternoon. It's still my... Uh, temperature gauge on my vehicle says plus six so that leaves us with a bit of a melting problem uh, it's uh, curious you drive two and a half hours to go see these things and conditions is really what matters the most so um, I'm gonna turn you guys around so you can see what's going on so you can see there are bubbles in the ice they are however Unfortunately, under a lot of water and quite a bit of haze. So even some of these clear areas that are underwater maybe had bubbles before. Bubbles are there, however, they are fairly hazy, so I don't think I don't think my abstract is going to work too well um, under these conditions but uh, that said I'm gonna try maybe shoot something really wide um, with uh, these mountains back here or Michener in the background find some nice uh, where the ice is doing something cool these swooping lines with some cracks and stuff um, looks like the Sun's gonna be going down here quick so I should find something I just wanted to let you guys know don't expect an abstract from me from this place so sometimes this is landscape photography. You don't know what you're gonna get. I have no idea if you can hear me. Um, <laughs> it's so windy out here, it's crazy. Um, so I didn't give up on this place. I uh, stuck it out um, and ended up exploring quite a bit. Probably walked a couple kilometers down that way looking for ice heaves and stuff like that. Um, ended up coming back almost to the parking lot and uh, came across these cool um, I don't even know what they are, um, just different textures in the way the ice uh, formed and so I'm going to flip you around and uh, show you what I'm getting here. Okay, so we have Mount Mishner, which is actually very similar to the other mountain I shot yesterday. Um, but here's my shot, I have these cool uh, sweeping lines that bring you all the way through the scene and I am Honestly, I'm pretty sure these clouds are going to light up here, so I'm going to wait this out a little bit. I do have another composition. You can see my bag flapping around over there. Um, I have a composition over there pointing at these mountains over here. So we'll see where the light goes and uh, we'll adjust accordingly. Um, not really a planned outing here. <laughs> not Sorry, not exactly according to plan, but that's what makes these kinds of shoots interesting. So. We will see what we come up with. I'll show you this pretty quickly. I'm uh, racked out at 15 millimeters. Um, might have to uh, um, so there's my foreground right there. Um, obviously my phone is uh, blowing it out but um, might have to do a bit of perspective blend on that mountain to make it a little bit bigger. Um, it is a big mountain, it's a teeny mountain in my frame, so um, I'll probably uh, consider doing something like that, but um, definitely exposure blended too, um, that sky, the highlights are quite bright, so I've actually uh, exposure blended this one as well. So I have a sky exposure and then three shots of the foreground that are focus stacked to give myself a little bit more uh, sharpness front to back. Um, the exposure is long enough in my foreground so that these ripples 
smoothing out and I get a bit of a reflection of the mountain as well so um, it might actually turn out so stay tuned. Again guys, apologize for the disjointedness of this video, that's even a word. Um, I felt like the audio was suffering so I didn't uh, film anything for that second shot. Um, hopefully the first shot was clear enough for you, you could hear it. If you have any questions on anything that I did with it, please send me a comment and I'll try my best. I'll do my best to um, reply to you. So, But I wanted to go over that second image and one of the issues I came across with um, the shoot. Okay guys, so we're here in Photoshop looking at the uh, raw file, now we call it raw, but it is adjusted in Lightroom for light and color. Um, so this is, you know, a raw file for me and so I um, wanted to show you just my, a little bit of my thought process and what I did with this image. So um, my, when I went to shoot this scene, you can see there's a tripod leg right here. I was really low really low to the ice. Uh, my camera was probably maybe two or three inches off the level, off the, off the, that, uh, the ice level and so that's why the ice is really prominent and it was shot at 15 millimeters so that wide angle distortion really benefited this this shot here so these uh, I love these sweeping lines that came in and the glass like reflection on top the, the water had you know kind of just uh, I guess for four second exposure the water had smoothed, and so that left these reflections and this glass-like appearance over top of the um, the ice. And there's even this pool here with reflections. So I really loved how it, it kind of like you didn't really know what you were looking at. You had to do a double take to even know, you know, is this ice? What is this? So that's what I liked about this scene. Um, now I had to focus stack it. Um, there's still four shots in here um, to get sharpness all the way through, and. I did a perspective blend here. I didn't do one on that Mount Michener. I felt the mountain was prominent enough in the frame that you knew what the photo was about. This one I felt like it lacked the subject, a focal point. Um, I was taking a photo of these um, of these mountains here, and um, they are small. Um, actually, the ridges beside them are larger than the mountains, which I didn't like. I felt these are supposed to lead your eye down in the frame and into this uh, you know the peak here. So. I took a photo at 24 millimeters of these mountains and I blended the 24 millimeter um, mountains in here um, with this photo. And so that's why the mountain is a bit bigger in the uh, finished photo. I did a perspective blend on that. And um, one more thing I wanted to chat about um, was, <laughs> interesting enough, first time I noticed this was on this uh, the shoot, so that's why I'm going to bring it up now, um, was cleaning your sensor. Um, some of you may send your camera off and get your sensor cleaned professionally, which is a great thing to do. Um, I am too cheap to do that, so I went and bought some uh, cleaning solution from my local retailer. Um, fairly inexpensive, uh, 40, 50 bucks to do it, and you know you can clean your sensor four or five times with that solution. And so I, I used the stuff that they gave me once before. Um, they gave me two vials though, and so I used one that worked really well. And then I couldn't remember which one worked, so I used one that you know it says sensor clean on it, and wiped my sensor. I had a couple you know spots that were reoccurring, so I knew it was my sensor. And you know after blowing it and vibrating it and all this other kind of stuff, I uh, you know none of the dust never fell off. So I decided to wipe the sensor and using the stuff that they gave, that they recommended to me. So. Um, Took a test shot after I wiped it and noticed, you know, there was nothing with it. And so when you do test shots, you know, I shot against a white background with a, you know, an exposure. And so usually if there's white, you know, there was nothing that showed up. And so um, I didn't look at the sensor after, you know, a day or two. And so took my camera on my trip 
and I noticed that these spots happened. Um, I noticed this on this day, so this is again, you know, quite a few photos in already, um, but all my photos were covered in these little uh, water spots, and so this this film that was all over my sensor destroyed my photos. Um, now I had two voices in my head when I saw this. Uh, I thought, well, I should drive to Canmore and go get you know some sensor cleaning and you know clean my sensor before I <laughs> continue on this rampage of photos I had planned to take. And the other half of me said, ah, just spot clean it when you get home. Spot heal it, it'll be fine. You can use a clone stamp tool and it'll take you 20 minutes and you'll be done. So fortunately the, the cheap, stupid half of my brain um, won out and I kept shooting with a dirty sensor. And which is, you know, talking about it now is pretty stupid. So um, again, you take anything from this video, take that home that always have a clean sensor. And if you notice your sensor's dirty, clean it. Because it took me about an hour, or not two, an hour and a half to clean up, a, you know, a f one photo. So I'm five photos in here, and so that took me five hours to clean these photos. Um, and there's way more photos to come. So I spent almost, let's say, eight to twelve hours cleaning spots from my photos. And the photos, I mean, it does a really good job, fantastic job. Um, Photoshop, I use different techniques to make sure that it's a clean file afterwards. So I feel like I can print them. However, I, you know, I can't recommend you do this to your photos. Uh, it's a time killer. Um, what a waste of time. Um, I, my fingers are, are raw from running around the trackpad trying to, you know, spot heal. So. Not something I recommend for anybody, but so make sure you have a clean sensor and always do you know triple quadruple checks to make sure that everything is okay before you go on a trip like this. So that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, hope it was helpful for you. Um, again, stay tuned for Emerald Lake next week. I have two of probably my best photos from there. Um, one of them for sure is going on next year's calendar, maybe two. So stay tuned for that one. Um, I'm really excited about the photos I got from there. So hope you enjoyed this content. Again, like and subscribe if you would be so kind. And we'll catch you guys on the other side. Cheers. Thanks.